This is the third of four training programs presenting the operation and maintenance of an air brake system. We will study the emergency and parking brake system components shown. But first, let's review program two, the service brake system. The E6 is two separate brake valves in a single housing operated by a single treadle. It receives air from two separate reservoirs in the system's primary and secondary circuits. The E6 treats the circuits independently and applies or releases either the front or rear brakes regardless of failure in either. Fastened to the push rod of the service brake actuators, the slack adjuster multiplies and converts linear force into a rotational force, or torque. This force rotates the brake camshaft, causing the brake shoes to contact the drum. With the ASA-5 automatic slack adjuster, the drum to lining clearance is also adjusted upon brake application. To ensure timely release of the front or steering axle brakes, a quick release valve was added between the brake chamber and brake valve. The R12 relay valve speeds up the application and release of the rear brakes, ensuring that the front and rear brakes apply simultaneously. Brake application air that flows to the brake actuators or relay valve also enters the SL5 stoplight switch. There, an electrical circuit is completed lighting the stoplights. Let's go on now to the emergency and parking system components, starting with double check valves, such as the Bendix DC-4. A double check valve performs two operations. It directs airflow for specific functions, and it selects the higher pressure from either of two sources. Parking brakes, for instance, can be controlled from either the front or rear service reservoirs. The most common double check valve uses a shuttle contained in a guide which is installed in the body. The DC-4 has two inlet ports and one delivery port. As air enters either inlet port, the moving shuttle responds to the pressure it seals the port receiving the lower air pressure level. But the airflow continues out the delivery port. If the pressure levels reverse, the position of the shuttle will reverse. The shuttle never impedes the flow of air. Here's a service tip. With certain double check valves used where pressure differentials may be minimal, mount them horizontally for optimum performance. The next component to be considered in the brake system is a dash control valve. The driver has several dashboard controls available. PP or push-pull valves are manually operable on-off air control valves. Pushing the button in places it in the delivery position. Most are pressure sensitive, like this Bendix PP1. It consists of a control button plunger, spring, inlet exhaust valve, and body. The body has three types of ports, supply, delivery, and exhaust. The PP1 is manually applied. If supplied pressure decreases to a specified minimum setting, usually 40 PSI, the PP1 will automatically move to the exhaust position. The plunger pops out, releasing air through the exhaust port. Of course, pushing the plunger back in to the applied position reactivates the control. But supply air pressure must be above 40 PSI for it to stay in. The PP-1 is available in a range of auto exhaust settings from 20 PSI through 60 PSI. In part two of this series, we covered the rear axle spring brakes. We learned that they function as the service, parking, and emergency brakes. Let's review briefly. 
the service chamber has a pressure plate and a non-pressure plate with a rubber diaphragm between them. The return spring in the chamber holds the push plate and rod assembly against the non-pressure side of the diaphragm. With a brake application, air pressure enters, ballooning the diaphragm and forcing the push rod and push plate out of the chamber. The return spring's resistance is overcome and the brakes are thus applied. The spring brake acts as the service brake on the rear axle and performs the additional function of emergency and parking brake. The rear portion, sometimes called the piggyback, has a powerful spring, diaphragm, emergency piston, emergency air inlet port, and release bolt. During vehicle startup, air pressure is applied to the diaphragm. The spring compresses, and the brakes are held in the released position until the vehicle is parked or a system failure occurs. The two sections of the spring brake utilize air pressure in an opposite manner. Air into the spring brake section releases the brakes. Air taken away applies them. Here's another service tip. The spring brake release bolt mechanically cages the parking brake spring when air pressure is not available so you can dismantle the brake or tow a vehicle. To ensure that the spring brake portion of the spring brakes respond quickly, a relay valve is mounted at the rear of the vehicle, near the brakes it serves. The relay valve speeds the application and release of the spring brakes. A spring brake relay valve delivers or releases air to the spring brakes in response to control air received from the PP1 push-pull valve or other source. A different relay valve controls the service brakes. The Bendix R14 relay valve is essentially the R12 discussed in part two of this series. The lower half of both valves are interchangeable. The R14 has an additional anti-compounding feature built in. The components for the anti-compounding feature are contained in the cover and consist of a diaphragm and balance port. Anti-compounding, simply defined, means the avoidance of double braking. It prevents the simultaneous application of service brakes and emergency or parking brakes. The compounding of spring force and air pressure creates too much force that could possibly damage brake components. The R14 prevents this from occurring. To accomplish this, a line is connected from the delivery side of the service relay valve to the balance port of the R14. With no air pressure at the service port of the R14, the parking brakes are applied. If a service brake application is made, air from the R12 relay valve enters the balance port of the R14's quick release. The diaphragm moves, blocking the service port. Air from the balance port flows into the cavity above the relay piston, forces the piston down, opening the inlet, delivering air to the spring brake cavity. The R14, through its anti-compounding feature, assures that the parking brakes are released with the same amount of air pressure as the R12 is delivering to the service brake.